Hi, Steve Cobb here. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I photograph shoes for eBay. I'm already editing it as I speak. These are, of course, a pair of Converse, Converse All-Stars. And I'm not going to talk constantly as I do this, uh, but I will talk uh, periodically. Um, these uh, are secondhand, bought at a thrift store. Uh, I've already washed them as best I could. And uh, I'm setting them up now to take photographs. In order to get the, um, this uh, to hold up, the tongue to stay up in position, I'm placing uh, these inside of it. Uh, these are um, clear plastic, obviously. Uh, I bought on uh, from Amazon, I believe. I forget what they're called. Um, shoe inserts, perhaps. Probably different names. Probably have some different names. Um, and they're handy with some shoes. Not all shoes, of course. I mean, that this shoe wouldn't need it. Um, and many shoes don't need it. But some, uh, perhaps a strappy, um, a strappy high heel would need it to hold the straps into position. That was the first use I made of it some time ago. I'm trying to get the uh, shoelaces to stay in position. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Now. Sometimes it's necessary to put material in the toe of the shoe to fill it out if it's been caved in a bit. These are a little caved in, but I think I think it's going to be okay. Yeah, okay. Um, and uh, you can't see my lights right now. I'll I'll do a wide shot after I'm done here. Um, but. Uh, the basis of photography, of all photography, is the control of light. And the opposite of light is shadow, or the lack of light. And of course, um, you can see the shadows all around here, and you can see the shadows around here too. But the point is, if you think of it as more as the control of shadow, uh, it'll give you a better handle on how you're controlling light. This is a method. I've used no, a number of several methods of photographing shoes over the over my time with eBay, and, but this method is one I especially like. Um, by placing uh, this this is a, a tabletop from an uh, end table, uh, it's uh, got smooth edges. It's not sharp, so that it won't cut me. Um, by elevating the, um, the shoes off the table by about six inches. It doesn't eliminate shadows, but it does reduce them and separate them from the shoe, so that the shadow of uh, uh, the shadow of the shoe is placed over there and over there and over there, and it's diffused, so that it is not as prominent. Um, and I usually take about nine or ten photos uh, of shoes, and I do it with my phone. Now the reason I do it with my phone, it's fast, convenient, uh, high quality camera. This is an Android um, Galaxy, Samsung Galaxy Note 7. The same phones that uh, were catching fire before they fixed the battery. Uh, and I use the built-in camera that comes with it. Now I'm going to try to show you a close-up. Let's see if I can get it on camera here. Yeah. Okay. These, uh, this is the camera. That's the take a picture button. Um, but this is the image. And I don't know. I'm going to have to... Yeah. Tilt it up like that. If I squeeze the image, or excuse me, expand the image with my fingers, um, it produces a zoom effect. Now what I want to do, because if you take the... Uh, if you take the pictures like this, the a photo of the shoe would be so foreshortened because it's a wide-angle lens built in that um, it would actually distort the shoes, especially uh, on uh, endo shots, say a front shot um, 
where the, the toe is pointing toward you. And so what I do is I look at that number there and it tells me how much zoom I'm using. And what I do is I put it at about two. Uh, that's just an arbitrary choice I've made uh, for myself. And then it goes away after a little bit. But I put it at 2.0. Um, and I use that level of zoom for all the shoe shots. Now, this causes me to, to uh, have to step back a bit to get the entire shoe in the shot. Now, the uh, glasses that are elevating the panel, the glass panel, well, they, of course, don't show up in the shot. And so, one, my first shot, generally, is what I call a set shot. Um, it's the shot that will be shown when people are looking through, um, scanning through many, many different images to find the item that they want. Okay. And I've set the camera, of course, in its default setting to make a click noise when it succeeds in taking a picture. Now, that is a, my standard set shot, what I've just taken. But I have, um, I will also often take another set shot, an alternate set shot. And I'll show you on the computer in a little bit what this shot looks like. shoes around, sometimes you have to move the lights around too. Now I've adjusted the shoes several times, but I have not taken the shot yet. Okay. Sometimes you have to fiddle with the shoes a few times before you're ready to really take your shot. Uh, let's see. I like to take side shots. Sometimes I have to put something under the shoes to to get the right angle. This I'm putting a battery and uh, currently a knife under the upper portion of the shoe to get them to tilt right. And now I'm standing on a chair so I can shoot down upon them. I like to uh, turn the overhead light off, but I like to uh, stand on a chair and shoot down so that I can get both shoes in the same shot. Now I'm shooting, I call these the side to side shots. They're, I don't know what other people call them. The other people, other people who sell on eBay also do these shots. Some of them uh, do the side to side shot separately with one shoe in the frame. I like to do two shoes in the frame. Sometimes you can't quite get them to stand up. And if you can't, well, you can't. In which case, sometimes I'll take the picture at a bit of an angle. I don't. The, the goal is to shoot either the side full on or a little bit uh, of the top with the side. That is to say, looking what appears to be down on the shoes. Even though they're upside down here, I'm going to turn the image around um, in the computer so that it looks like we're, the, the shoes are right side up. Okay, having shot those, I next do a toe shot. And you'll notice that I move the lights between almost every shot. And I don't actually have the shoes touching one another. 
This is to let a little extra light in between them. Okay. And then I do a high front shot. And I'm adjusting my position to fill the shoes, or fill the frame with the shoes. Okay. Having gotten that, I turn them around and I do the heel shot. Woo! Again, not quite touching, simply to let a little more light in between them. Okay. Now, I typically do um, a shot of the bottom. Now, sometimes I'll use a, a clip to uh, join the shoes together to try to get them to stand up, stand upright. Yeah. These are fighting me a little bit. There we go. There we go. Yeah. Okay. And I adjust my lights to best show the tread on the bottom. Okay. Sometimes the shoes will be on the table though, um, uh, with the toes up, sometimes the toes down, sometimes, uh, especially boots, I'll lay them on their side um, because they'll stand, you know, without any support, without any help. One shot I didn't do, I don't use this for it. Um, shoelaces came out. And that is a straight down shot. A lot of shoes um, have their brand name located inside the shoe. Uh, and so a straight down shot shows that off. Oh, there's another shot that I do too. Uh, and that is a shot that takes about this much material at that angle in order to get the inside of the heel um, to show the, the potential buyer that it's clean because nobody really wants to put their foot in a dirty shoe. And so if that area is good and clean, it reassures them that they're not, you know, they're not buying a, uh, a basically a nasty shoe. See if I can get this shot, a straight down shot, without letting the tongue fall down. So that it shows off the converse, the word converse, inside the shoe. Again, there's a oh, about a half inch or more gap between the two shoes. And I arrange the um, the lights so that they will shine inside the shoe. And after every shot, I look at the shot to verify that it's clear and that it doesn't overfill, overfill the frame, doesn't run over the edge of the frame. Just do a quick quality assurance. Sometimes, on rare occasions, the shot will not be clear, even though it's an autofocus camera. And I make sure I have all my shots. One, two. Let's see, I've got two set shots, side to side, uh, toe, high front, heel, bottom, uh, overhead shot. I don't have the inside of the shot, and I don't have the size. Okay, let's see if I can do that without the tongues falling down. You have to arrange the light to shine inside the shoes. And uh, as, if possible, cast as little shadow as possible. On the grounds that, oh, I do need them to touch. 
on the grounds that uh, shadows can look like dirt, can be mistaken for dirt. Okay, now I need the size. Now the size on these shoes is generally located on the underside of the tongue, which means you'll need to open them up, bend the tongue around, around your finger like that, flatten it out, and shoot the shot one-handed. And I usually shoot both, <coughs> excuse me, both labels. And the reason is sometimes there'll be um, a flaw or damage to one label, but not the other, that I don't even notice because it's so small, or the writing is so so fine that I just don't don't notice it, or we get an odd reflection that obscures some of the writing. This one's fighting me more than the other one. Okay. But, that amounts to the uh, photo photographing of one shoe. Now, using this has sped up the process a great deal. Previously, when I first started out, I would shoot shoes flat on the table, which, I don't know if you can see it very well, but it produces a lot of shadow, not just around the shoes, even with these lights. Um, but between the shoes, and a, a toe shot. Let me let me bring the camera over here, and I'll show you the different shots that I do. Okay, this is um, where I stand. The view from where I stand. Um, got my little light, my other little light, and I've got my bigger lights, which I'll I'll go wide and show you in a little bit. Um, and right here, you can see that there's a good bit of shadow between the shoes, but they're sitting on the table. And of course, if I did a toe shot, toe shot, it's very dark under there, under the shoes. Um, the shot would be about like, about like that. I'll just fill the frame just a little bit. Yeah, about like that. Although, not only do I do, um, uh, not only do I do a zoomed shot in the camera. I actually set, and I'll show you this too. I think I can show it to you here. Um, I press this button, this little, I don't know it's a, what it's called, a little gear maybe symbol, and I click on picture size, and there are two um, sizes of square shots. Uh, the aspect ratio on these two are one to one, they're square shots. Then these, which are 16 to 9, like a modern TV, and, and like the movie camera I'm using this right now. Um, and there's four to three, which is, a, I think, the old TV style, if I remember right, um, from uh, back in the days of tube TVs. Anyway, uh, I use the higher resolution of the of the two square shots and high resolution for clarity square because all the shots on um, or the default setting for eBay is square and so having set that my shots are square the uh, camera is set up to take square shots and which means I don't need to crop the, the photos after I upload them to eBay. At any rate, as you can see, uh, there's a lot of shadow under and around the shoes. Pretty much um, at every angle. And by placing them on this sheet of glass, The shadows are not actually eliminated, but they are reduced. I move my lights into position for a toe shot, but they are reduced a great deal, so that you can see all the way around the shoe, without uh, obstruct uh, any shadows actually obstructing any of the uh, of the image. The 
you see there is a uh, there is a bit of a shadow, a shadow but it is not very pronounced uh, same with the heel shot that'd be approximately a heel shot right there maybe a little closer but at any rate that heel shot if done without this sheet of glass would have pronounced shadow, a pronounced shadow marking the uh, the bottom, the edge, which is less noticeable perhaps than the on the toe shot, but it is still there. Even separating the shoes, it's dark between them when they're sitting flat on the table. Okay, uh, let me go ahead and show you the uh, my setup. I'll back up a bit here. See if I can back up enough so that you can see it without stumbling over shoes. Um, what you're seeing here is I have um, two lights here on a pole, on a tripod. They're very, very bright. And over next to it, on the other side of me, I stand between them at the center of the table. At the other side, there is another tripod and a tall pole with two lights on it. Then, on the table, I, I have... Uh, I, th I bought that lamp at a thrift store. And then at the other side of the table, I have another lamp. Uh, again, I bought it at a thrift store. I think I paid, I don't know, four bucks, five bucks for them. So that I have six bulbs on the setup. Um, uh, the two high ones on the left, two high ones on the right, one low one on the right, and one low one on the left. And the purpose of, the, of so many bulbs, let me, find a, let me go find a shoe that has a uh, reflective, it's a shiny shoe. Okay, look at how this shoe glistens and gleams in the light. I'm trying to hold the camera steady while I <coughs> move my overhead lights about. Now, it's possible you're not actually, your eye is not attuned to where, how it's glistening and gleaming because you have seen so many thousands of photos of shoes in magazines and catalogs. But I'll show you the contrast when I turn off the two side lights, the two little lamps. Okay, now the shoe is lit only by the tall lamps, not the two side lamps. And for another example, let me get another another pair of shoes. Yeah, here is a pair of, of dark leather shoes. I think these are would be considered navy, navy blue. Uh, and the uh, side lamps are off, but now I'll turn them on. And you can see um, some nice reflections off the back end. Let's see if I can hold this thing steady. Yeah, right there. I'm covering. I'm covering the lamp on the la on the right. Yeah, and uh, of course you can uh, move the lights, the front lights, the tall lights, to change the reflections or find a reflection that you particularly like. Mind you, you don't want to find a reflection you particularly like. Uh, at the sacrifice of actually lighting the shoes. <laughs> if you're creating some, obs some uh, distracting shadows under the shoes. But at any rate, that's how I, uh, how I shoot shoes um, uh, for uh, my, my primary shots. That is uh, a setup shot for this one that might be like this at about that angle, perhaps. Um, if I do that, I also do a more standard set shot, about like that, perhaps. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Same with this. Um, these are much more dramatic shoes. And so I would uh, do a set shot like that, although these are far too forward. Yeah, about like that. And then I would do also 
a shot like that. You know, it's being blocked a bit. The second one, the, the behind one is being blocked. Yeah, about like that. Mm -hmm. about like, yeah, about like that. And you notice that uh, if you treat the image as a two-dimensional thing, well then there's a very small gap between the two shoes. You're basically using um, the complete frame, if it were square. You're filling the entire square frame with shoes. And of course the reverse shot, that the backwards one, is to show the shoe at a different angle, an additional angle. And mind you, the set shot, this shot, would be on the uh, search page. The, it would be the one shot that people would see when they're scrolling through all of the shoes that are in their search, uh, search listing. So that this is the, basically the, the shot intended to draw them in to its page so they'll see other shots of this shoe. Mind you, I'm not trying to say that this is the only way to shoot shoes. It's just the way I'm shooting shoes today. My only encouragement to you is that you uh, experiment, try what you're comfortable with, what equipment you have. Um, everybody shoots shoes differently. This is my method. At any rate, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe for future videos. Also, press the little bell icon next to the subscription button if you'd like to be notified when I upload my next uh, videos. And as always, thank you for watching. Bye.